abstract uh, uh, ADT that is uh, abstract data structure an abstract data structure is uh, the one in which uh, you are not going to give the final details of the data structure but you are explaining everything about the data structure for example uh, int x when i say x is a variable of a uh, integer data type then you have not said but uh, indirectly you have already said yeah uh, the quiz solution will be discussed uh, in last half an hour shrikant we'll do that in the last half an hour that is uh, from 340 onwards we'll discuss about the first you will appear for the quiz and then we'll discuss the quiz okay right so now uh, i was at uh, abstract data type so in case you say x is a variable of a integer data type then uh, it is understood that x will have the properties of addition multiplication subtraction and other mathematical operations right so uh, similarly we'll uh, today see uh, what happens uh, with stacks now a simple example of uh, a stack as you see it on the left side of your screen generally when we pick up book from the rack and try to place it on the table we keep one book over on top of other so we also in generic term we say it's a stack of books right so the topmost book is the one which is in light brown color and below that is uh, your, your purple and blue green and dark brown color so the last book is uh, the brown color book so when you want to pick up the book when you want to pick up the book you pick up the book first which is on the top so also when you want to place the book for example if i placed the brown and the green book if i have to place the next book it will be on top of green then the violet will be on top of blue and the light uh, brown will be the topmost so the entry into the stack is happening on one side the entry into the suppose we consider this as a stack of books so if we want to enter a new book we have to enter on the top of the stack and if you want to remove we have to remove the topmost book from the stack right same thing in a linked list linked list form linked list form like uh, you have seen yesterday the example of how to build the linked list the arrow is indicating that uh, this node is connected with this node this node is connected with this node and the last node the last node is pointing to null the last node is pointing to null right so <clears throat> the the topmost uh, when you enter if one is already in the stack two has to be on the uh, last then the last then the last then the last so the topmost element the topmost element is uh, to be added from one side and if you have to remove you have to remove 6 first then 5 then 4 in that manner in that manner so the basic operation of the stack are like this first push right push into the stack generally uh, in yesterday's class we have whenever we wanted to add a element to the linked list we are saying that insert into the linked list but as uh, we have seen it yesterday uh, in yesterday's class we have seen that the insertion can happen at the beginning of the linked list the insertion can happen in the middle of the linked list so also the insertion can happen at the end of the linked list right but when we say stack when we say stack then there are certain limitations then there are certain limitations because what we are doing we are we are creating a, a data structure 
which has got some fixed properties, right? So instead of saying insert, instead of, instead of saying insert, we'll say push, right? Push. Actually, you are adding one node in the already existing or an empty stack, right? But where you are going to enter is what matters. So instead of saying insert, we'll, we are going to say push. So this push is going to have push k on top of the stack, right? Or put k, put kth book on top of h book, right? So the precondition, the precondition to check whether I can push it into the stack is that the stack should not be full. As I told you yesterday, that the stack has got is nothing but a memory kind of a uh, uh, it's a memory in the RAM and this the moment it is a memory in the RAM obviously this memory is going to have some value so if the memory is full obviously you want me to be louder okay uh, just a minute All right. Uh, this is uh, better. Venkat Karthik, is it loud enough? Right. So now we are at the push. So the name of the function which we are going to mention is push itself. Right. It is not going to return anything, but it is going to push into the stack. Now the precondition, I was at the precondition. What the precondition? The precondition says that the stack should not be full. So we are always keeping a track that the memory in which that stack is there is not full. Now the second operation of stack is pop, right? What yesterday we saw uh, a delete function, delete a node. Right. So again, yesterday when we are trying to delete a node, we are deleting the node either from the front or from the rear or some node in the middle, some node in the middle. Right. But when it comes to stack, when we come to stack, it is uh, not that this liberty we do not have that we can delete from anywhere in the stack. If we have to delete or the correct uh, terminology while Talking in terms of stack is pop, pop a element from the stack. So this pop also happens on the top. The pop also happens from the top. So in generic way, the method is item pop is a function. So you are going to call a function as a pop, and in case it is going to return an integer value, then the item is replaced with int. Even in case you are turning a float value, then it becomes, it becomes float pop, right? So the every time you call a function, the topmost element of the stack is going to be popped out. The topmost element of the stack is going to be popped out. So remove and return the top element from the stack is what is your pop operation. The precondition is that is exactly opposite of push. The precondition is that uh, the stack should not be empty. The stack should not be empty. Means what? If the stack is empty, what will you pop it out? Right? So just check whether the stack is empty or not. Now peak. Now peak is one more property of your stack. It does not remove or insert any element into the stack or from the stack, but what it does, it gives that which is the topmost element in the stack, right? Which is the element which is standing at the top of the stack. So <clears throat> it's going to show the item, but it is the difference between pop and peak is that in pop, the item is removed from the stack and the count of the number of elements in the stack comes down by one. In case of peak, 
it is going to just indicate that which is the topmost element in the stack but it is not going to remove that element from the stack right so peak and pop this is the difference now <coughs> the precondition is that uh, it should not be empty so also there are two more properties that is is empty the return type is boolean right is empty means what when we are, are going to remove the element we are going to check whether is the stack empty so the answer is either true or false so also the opposite of that is full is the stack full if the stack is full obviously you cannot push elements into the stack right so uh, in a diagrammatical fashion if you want to peak if you want to peak you have to you are adding the element to the top of the stack this is the tail of the stack this is the head of the stack the tail of the stack and this is the head of the stack so when you want to when you want to push you are going to push on the top of the stack when you want to peak it is just going to indicate which is the element at the top of the stack when you want to peak just going to indicate which is the element at the top of the stack and when you want to pop you are literally removing the element from the stack right so the stack height reduces by 1 and this becomes the head of the stack this becomes the head of the stack so peak pop push is empty is full and uh, are the general functions or general properties of your stack and another thing in the stack is what its stack is last in first out in short it is also called as lifo lifo last in the element which is entered last is the first element which has to be popped out right if the push enters this last element and if i perform a pop operation so this element only has to be popped this element only has to be popped now why are we studying uh, this particular operation of is that in every computing in every uh, say compiler design or operating system design the stacks play a very very vital role the stacks will play a very vital role in the sense that if the function which is there all the local variables of this functions all the local variables of this function are kept in a stack right and that's the reason why when you are out of the function when you are out of the function all of you know that the local variables the life of local variable will terminate the life of the local variable will terminate once you are out of the function now how does the computer understand to terminate the life of the variables right the moment you say return or the last statement of the function is executed it, the operating system goes automatically to the stack and it starts popping out each and every variable from the stack right so whenever you create a function actually at the background you are creating a stack for this so basically to make you understand to basically to make you understand that how this function is working uh that's the reason why stack has been included into your syllabus now so this is the the top the bottom part is the tail and the top part is the head so let's get familiar with all these terminologies the bottom part will let's call it as tail the top part let's call it as head push is adding an element into the stack pop is removing the element from the stack and peak is the indicator which uh, shows what is the topmost element in the stack okay so inserting or deleting a new node can be performed at one side of the list in case you are talking in terms of linked list then it is going to be from one side only top of the stack points to the last element in the stack stack is a dynamic using linked list that is uh, in your syllabus you have both the things 
you are expected to create a stack using arrays and you are also expected to create a stack using linked list so we'll see both this in today's class that we'll construct a um, uh, a program or we'll write a program which will which is going to use arrays as a stack and which is going to use linked list as a stack right now implementing a push function i'll first uh, discuss the individually what a push function is doing and then what we'll do uh, all of you will uh, activate your uh, compilers and actually execute this code now during the running of the class and see that the uh, push pop operation does take place now what we do is t is a globally declared variable now this t is going to count is going to count whether the stack is full or stack is empty now this t that is initialized with minus 1 now when the value of this t when the value of this t is minus 1 it means that the stack is empty right first we are going to consider the case where we are creating an array which is going to work like a stack we are going to create an array which is going to work like a stack so in a global variable when i declare this global variable in t i am going to put give an initial value of minus 1 so push element int element so the element which you want to push is a parameter is a parameter and i am calling the push element function i just go through the two lines of code that is simple very simple and you should be able to understand this now what assumption we are making the assumption which we are making is that for the sake of simplicity we are assuming that the maximum number of elements in the stack are 20 the maximum number of elements in the stack are 20 so if t equal to equal to 20 if t equal to equal to 20 then what what is going to happen we are just going to say that the stack is full the stack is full right and return right so is empty is full is being performed in this particular fashion 0 to 19 it means there are 20 elements so if t equal to equal to 20 then the stack is going to be full if it is not means if the stack is not full then what we are doing we are creating an array which is the integer type of an array stack array st underscore arr is the name of the stack array so this plus plus t right so initially the value of t is what minus 1 so when the first element is entered the first element this minus 1 will change to 0 so the 0th element whichever element you are passing it over here whichever element you are passing it over here this element is going to be at the st underscore arr of 0 suppose you are passing 0 and the value of t is minus 1 this is false so it won't go get into the if block it comes to the it comes outside the if block and first make this t as 0 and this 10 value is going to get stored at st underscore rr of 0 is this uh, push function understood in case you have not understood the push function come to the chat window and ask for the clarification i'll explain anybody who has not understood this uh, push function come to the chat window and uh, then we'll explain in case there is any doubt it's, uh, it's absolutely easy and i'm sure all of you must have understood each and every statement is the push function okay if the yeah anybody has got any clarification regarding this push function right great now let's go to the pop function right implementing the pop function now what is this pop function now 
T is global as uh, uh, we have seen it in the last uh, push function also. So, T is initialized to minus 1 and since pop, pop means we should give an indication to the user that which is the element which it has popped, which is the element which it has popped. So, that is the reason why I am considering an integer array as working as your uh, uh, stack, right. So, when I am calling the pop function, the topmost element in the array is required to be popped out and this topmost element we are going to understand which is the topmost element based on the value of t, based on the value of t. So, that is the reason why I kept t in global area. When t is kept in global area, in the previous uh, slide all of you have seen the push function. So, this push function was also able to access this uh, global variable t and now when it comes to pop function because we are keeping the global variable t therefore this pop function is also going to access the latest value or the current value of uh, your global variable t that is the reason why you are required to declare t global don't make the mistake of declaring t as a local variable because just now i said that local variable the life of the local variable will finish once you are out of the function right so do not make a mistake of uh, declaring t in the local area okay so let's see the <coughs> if t equal to equal to minus 1 means what if t is equal to minus 1 means the stack is empty the stack is empty right the stack is empty so in the push function what we were considering the push function we were considering that the if the stack is full i will not be able to push the next element opposite i can pop elements provided the stack is not empty so, so if the value of t reaches minus 1 then the stack is empty so we go into the if block and we indicate to the user that the stack is empty and return and return return where we are right we are intending to write a menu driven program right and using the switch case we are going to call one operation at a time right do you want to push press one do you want to pop press two right so on and so forth do you want to display the elements in the uh, stack then press three something like that so this return is going to return to the main function from where the pop function is going to get called so if it is not minus one if it is not minus one means either it is zero or it is up to 19 right 0 to 19 as we are making an assumption that from 0 to 19 it is going to be uh, 20 elements so the stack is to be considered as full when t value is 20 okay so return means what now we are returning we are returning the t the current value of t and then bringing it down to minus minus so if the if the present value of the stack that is the present value of t is 0 the zeroth element is going to be returned the zeroth element is going to be returned and t value will reduce to minus 1 t value will reduce to minus 1 right so another request comes to pop now already t value is minus 1 and you will say that the stack is empty suppose the value of t is 3 right so return st underscore r of 3 means the fourth element in the array is going to be returned the fourth element in the array is going to be returned and what and what the t value will become 2 the t value will become 2 so next time again the pop request comes it is going to reduce by 1 ok now let us see the complete program now I will while I am explaining it to you, you also start writing this code in your compiler. 
So activate your compiler. Give the name of the compiler as stack operation stack op dot c and your uh, if you are working in dev plus dev c plus plus then ponio dot h the second statement ash include ponio dot h will not work because this is not the header file so comment that in case you are working in turbo c then you can continue to write ponio.h. Okay. So uh, you must have seen after that in the global in the global area, I have an, an array st underscore arr st underscore arr the size is 20. st underscore arr the size is 20. So maximum it can accommodate 20 elements. Another global variable t initialized to minus one. So t is representing the top of the stack. T for top, therefore the variable selected is T. Now I have void push underscore element with one parameter int pop underscore element with no parameters, but it has got a return value of uh, int and void display elements. So these this is a prototype, right? So push underscore le pop underscore le and display underscore le are the prototype of the functions right what is the prototype you are giving a indication you are warning the compiler that somewhere in the program i am going to define i am going to define a function whose name is push underscore le pop underscore le and display underscore le right now coming to the main function, in the main function, all of you must have guessed it, that I am trying to display a menu driven program, right. Before that, uh, the local variable in the main function are choice num1, num2, initialized to 0. I don't think I am using num1, num2, but uh, uh, let's see, uh, if it is not utilized, you can remove them. Now while 1. While one is a uh, endless uh, while loop. While one is an endless while loop, but definitely if the user gives a choice as four, if the user gives the choice as four, then we are going to come out of the come out of the while loop. Right? We are going to come out of the while loop. Okay, so uh, it is not going to be an endless loop, though while one by itself is an endless loop. Again, if you are working in Turbo C, then CLR SCR, the first statement in the while loop will work. But if you are working in Dev++, then this will give you an error, compilation error. So those guys who are working in Dev C++, please do not add this statement CLR SCR. Basically, CLR SCR, the library function, the job of this library function is that Whatever is there already on the screen, it clears the screen. It clears the screen. But uh, it doesn't, uh, not required in Dev++ because every time you run the code, a clean new window automatically gets created. So there is no requirement of clearing the screen as such. Therefore, the CLR SCR uh, function, uh, library function is not a part of your Dev C++. Then I'm giving a menu driven program uh, one using push function two pop function three display and four is exit i will finished please finish the coding so that uh, you can go to the push pop and display functions, execute it yourself. And understand how the stack works. How the stack works. So,
I'm coming to that. Don't worry. Let me. I'm once again showing the push function. I'll come and show you the functions again. Then you can type it out. Right? Then you can. That, that's the time. I'll explain it. Okay. So we are continuing in the main. Enter your choice. F flush. F flush in case because it's a character type. So it's better to use F flush. And what is what is character type? Your uh, choice. Choice is char type. Choice is char type. Therefore, generally the F flush, F flush functions are used to flush the flush the uh, buffer. Means what? What is a buffer? Buffer is a <coughs> part of your RAM. Buffer is a part of your RAM. Whenever you are typing on the keyboard, <coughs> whenever you are typing on the keyboard. It doesn't directly go into the RAM. First, it goes to the buffer called as std in. The name of the buffer is given as in the C compiler as std in. So, this std in buffer it is going to flush. Sometimes a garbage value remains in this buffer and it does not wait for you to give your choice and picks up some random choice and goes ahead. So that's the time you start feeling that your compiler is behaving in a uh, in a very strange fashion, or the compiler has gone mad. But actually, the nothing is wrong with the compiler. You are not clearing the buffer. So F flush function is meant to clear the buffer. So well, first we clear the buffer and take the input from the user. That is scanf choice. That is scanf choice. Then in the switch case, in the switch case, case one, if the user enters case one, we are asking element to be pushed. Element to be pushed. That is taken num one. So uh, one small correction over here. One small correction over here. Or I'll I'll make it here itself so that uh, it's done. We are using this num1 and this is person at D. So num1 by mistake I had uh, declared it as char type, but now I have changed it to int type as it is over here. So int num1 and int num2. Initialize to zero. So now the element which you want to be pushed, the element you want to be pushed, you are taking it from the user, you are taking it from the user, and you are calling the push underscore element and passing this num1. Passing this element, num1. As you are, you can see that uh, when we had, when we had created this prototype, void push le, the parameter which is you required is an integer type of parameter, right? So we are expected to pass an integer value. We are expected to pass an integer value. So what happens from the main function, the push element function gets called. And for some temporary duration, the main function goes into the background, and the push element function comes into the active area, right? And once you are back, you are you have completed the push function. It comes the control comes back here and then breaks. So you are still in the while loop. Again, the menu will get displayed. Again, the menu will get displayed, and the user has got option to select one, two, three, and four. Similarly, the case two. Case two, we are using num two, pop element num two, right? So when you call this pop element, whichever element the function is going to return is stored in num two, and that num two we are displaying here. That is the element pop is num two, right? Again, when you are working in uh, uh, dev C plus plus, get ch does not work. Get ch does not work. So please comment this. Now this get ch function 
is to stop the screen to stop the screen to display the output to the user but in dev c++ automatically the screen stops so user knows exactly what what has been done okay so in case you are working in turbo c then do use get ch similarly we are calling the display function again get ch not required and one, once is a four you are exiting and in case you are not using one two three four this is a default your choice is invalid that prompt is given so i hope with that your main function is complete with that your main function is complete anybody is still typing okay the chat window is silent so now so see data pop function we are not really deleting the element right yes venkat venkat kartik you are right we are not physically deleting because we are in the array right in the array we are not removing it but we are decrementing the value of t by 1 we are decrementing the value of t by 1 by which it it is giving an impression that the element has got removed it's giving an impression that the element has got removed but physically that element continues to remain in the array so now uh, going next going next now uh the push function push element function so if the value of t equal to equal to 20 we are just displaying that the stack is full and no need of get ch and we are returning back to the main function right so do not write exit just say return over here do not write exit but say return over here again in case the user enters choice as 2 if the user enters the choice as 2 then this pop element function gets called pop element function gets called we are declaring int le1 we are declaring a local variable called as int le1 and if we are checking back if the t value is equal to minus 1 we are saying that the stack is empty if it is not minus 1 if it is not minus 1 then we are returning the topmost element and then reducing the value of t by 1 then reducing the value of t by 1 so in this program there is no requirement of this le there is no requirement of le because i am using return itself right so let me comment this particular statement not required the statement is not required and now suppose the user enters choice as 3 if the user enters the choice as 3 then <coughs> the element present in the stack are for k is equal to 0 k less than t k plus plus right k equal to 0 k less than or equal to t k plus plus and we are using the latest value of k and displaying the element and displaying the elements Are you done with all the three functions? If you are done with all the three functions, then save, compile, save, compile, and run it. Add three four elements. Add three four elements. That is push. Three four elements, then pop one by one. Has anybody 
executed this code. Stack using arrays. Has any one of you executed the code? No one? Do it fast because we have to see the linked list way of stack operation. Okay, Venkat Karthik has done. Are you getting the result, Venkat Karthik? Are you able to push pop and display? Okay, that doubt which you had. Suppose first you had three elements. You popped out. Again you push three elements. So the new elements will be shown or no? Since you are not physically popping out, means you are not physically removing it. But you are overwriting and managing the display using T. So, did you, what I suggest to Venkat Karthik and other students, please push three elements, pop these three elements, focus, suppose first three elements are 10, 20, 30. Pop all these elements, then push 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 elements and pop them. So, the previous stack values will be overwritten with the new stack values. Any other student who has who have finished? Any other student who have done it? Uh, sir, in pop function, it should be minus minus t in return statement because if we want to delete fourth element then we should pop element in array of this b it doesn't matter right are you getting wrong results d right with this code are you getting wrong results Type it and whether you do it T minus 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 T or T minus Y. And then see it yourself. Because the topmost, the present, the current element has to be popped. The current value of T because we have started T value with minus 1. Because we started t value with minus 1, so the first element entered is 0, right? So when you pop out, first 0th element is popped out and then the value of t becomes minus 1. Venkat Karthik, did you write t minus minus or minus minus t? Venkat Karthik, who has finished the Naga Venkat Karthik, who has finished, did you write minus minus t or t minus minus? Right. 
and swagging. Students, please be fast. We are all CSC IT guys. Hardly 15 20 lines of code is there. Okay, okay, Roy. Right. So, looks like right, only three students are saying done. How is this? That out of 400 plus students, only 300 have saying yes, done. Others, please mark up. I have to, I have to complete the linked list job also. Then you have to appear for the quiz and take the explanation of this quiz also. Hello students, are you done? I am going to give you exactly 20 seconds and I am going to proceed further. In case you are still typing, take a screenshot and continue to type. Okay, so having done the stack operation using arrays, let's proceed and see how we can use linked list, how you can use linked list to perform the stack operation. So code to create stack using linked list. Now first let me explain you, let me explain you uh, the, the structure of your node. Now, compared to yesterday, I am using type def. I am using type def. One of the students asked me, what is this type def for yesterday? So, I, I don't remember his name. Uh, but uh, this type def, the type def is you are uh, typifying, you are typifying the user defined data type. Typifying means what? Built in data types int, float, char. They are built in, so you can use these keywords, right? So once I type def this, once this I use the keyword type def struct stack. So the name of the structure is stack, right? And the the variable which I have used it over here is capital stack. There's a difference between the small stack and capital stack. You know, you are all C students, so the C is case sensitive so there's a the, it considers it as a different name for the further program for the further program i can instead of writing struct stack and a variable of the stack i simply use stack in caps so that is the advantage of type def that is the advantage of type def so using the type type def i'm using the creating the stack so stack that is capital stack is the other name of stack node data type right stack stack node data type now this uh, uh, let us add one uh, lot of uh, pointers which are going to, which we are going to use in the program so instead of writing stack stack and pointer head i simply said capital stack and head tail, temp, shadow pointer and cur, right? In this, this cur, the, the last one, the cur creates a new node, head keeps address of the top of the stack, right? Why we are interested in always keeping the tag of top of the stack because the 
stack as per the property of the stack you have to add at the top of the stack and you have to remove from the top of the stack so the top we are calling it as head so head keeps the address of the top of the stack now coming to tail keeps the address of the tail that is the bottommost node in the linked list right and temp temp uh, i am using this temp pointer uh, in a show show that is the display kind of a function which displays all the elements in the stack now unlike what uh, i think uh, venkat karthik or somebody asked me that when i'm popping an element from the stack when we are using arrays physically i am not removing that particular element from the array but that won't happen in the case of a linked list in the linked list we are physically removing the element from the linked list right we are physically deleting that element in the linked list so using the array as a stack it is as kind of a static kind of a stack representation but when you use linked list it is a dynamic kind of a static uh, stack representation we are physically adding to the linked list and we are physically removing a node from the linked list right now see the push function see the push function now if you compare this push function with our previous class adding a node at the end is what operation we are supposed to do adding the node at the end is what is the stack operation right so if you go through the code first go through the code and then i'll explain you each and every step first you go through the code then i'll explain each and every step at the same time once you finish this please take a screenshot please take a screenshot i'm not going to wait for you to type it out you do it in leisure after the class you execute this code and see it yourself right so <clears throat> what we are doing uh, i am creating curl right a pointer of stack type curl is a pointer of stack type head is already created here in fact curl is also created with so no need of explicitly writing it uh, <clears throat> so head equal to null when will head be null when the stack is uh, you are calling the push function and if the head is null it means that so presently the stack is empty now the stack is empty is not a problem as far as the push function is concerned push function has a problem when the stack is full right if head equal to equal to null means what there are no elements in the stack so what we are doing we are using the mlloc function allocating the size of the structure which structure stack structure so uh, yesterday i do not know who had uh, raised this point regarding the type def was it venkat karthik then who was it anyway uh, so uh, unlike in the linked list code unlike in the linked list code in the linked list code if you remember we were writing over here stuck node stuck node here also we are writing stuck node pointer right that has got replaced with stack and what is this stack because we use the keyword type def we are for this particular program sake for this particular program sake it it almost starts behaving like a built in function from here onwards from here onwards like int x i say stack pointer head means what struct stack pointer head struct stack pointer head so here if you see i am using the capital stack that much of memory size gets allocated using the mlloc function as you, i told you yesterday also that mlloc function always returns a void pointer that particular void pointer you are type casting it to stack stack data type right because head is a pointer of stack type therefore we have to type cast this particular void pointer to stack pointer and then only the assignment will be correct now head of data right 
data is an element over here. So let me explain over here the diagram. So head of head of data is equal to n. What is this n? Suppose n value is 10. N value is 10. Then the head of data is 10. Right? So what you are doing? If the stack is empty, if the stack is empty, then <coughs> head of data is equal to n. Means when the stack is empty, means there are this is going to be the first element. This is going to be the first element. So directly we are taking the help of the head. Okay. Head of next is equal to null. Why head of next is equal to null? Because that is the first element in the stack. That's the first element in the stack. Uh, and that's the last element of the stack also. Right? How do you identify the last node when the next next link is null? That means that the, the, the that happens to be the last node in the stack. Now, because that's the first and first element, so tail equal to head means what? The head is also because there is only one node. I can call that node as tail also. I can call that node as head also, right? So tail is equal to head, right? And just for the sake of just for the sake of it, I am printing out. The address percentile u tail and head the address of tail and head any doubt regarding the if head equal to equal to null in case there is any doubt please come in the chat window and ask otherwise i will go to the else part Anybody who is not understood the when do you go in the if head equal to equal to null when you are going to push the very first element in the stack because that is the first element whether you call it as a tail element or head element is one and the same therefore tail is equal to head tail equal to head still anyone has not understood the push function is this code applicable only when there is a single element? No, I am coming to the else part. Uh, this this applicable for any number of elements as your memory permits. Neha, but to begin with, to begin with, presently the value of the number of uh, elements in the stack when there are zero from zero point you are starting right so that is the time the first if condition is going to tackle that so this code is not this particular if condition is only applicable when you are going to create the first node in the stack Neha, have i answered your question Right now, assume, assume that I'll show it diagrammatically. Assume that when you are in the else block, when you are in the else block, right? So this is the situation. Already, already there are certain elements in the stack. Already there are certain elements in the stack, and the head is standing at the last element in the stack. That is the topmost element in the stack, right? So obviously. The topmost element is going to point to null. Are you getting the diagram? Now, this is the condition. Now, let me explain from this point. The condition is that already a stack is there, already a stack is there, and the head is pointing to the last element in the stack, the topmost element in the stack. How do you understand the topmost element when the link is equal to null? Right? Instead of link, uh, we are going to write next. So when this next equal to null, this is the topmost element. So already a stack is there with few elements, right? When the stack is there with few elements, obviously head is not null. Are you getting my point? Head is saving the base address of a node, the last node. Head is having the base, pointing to the base address of the last node. So since it is pointing to the base address of the last node, it is not null. 
so this if condition fails because the if condition fails is going to come to the else part in the else part we are creating a pointer or we are utilizing this pointer curve and allocating the base address so this curve pointer is storing the base address of this particular node right this is an isolated node this is presently is an isolated node now this isolated node we are populating by curve of data is equal to n this n value suppose it is 10 when we call the push function you are expected to pass an integer value i have passed n as 10 so curve of data this data you are going to have 10 as the value next curve of next is equal to null right so curve of this next is going to be null wrongly i have written as link but it is as per the structure it is going to be next so curve of next we are putting it as null so statement number one two and three now head of next is equal to curve presently what is head of next presently head of next is equal to null presently head of next uh, are you getting confused with the diagram let me change it here itself So I was at this particular statement, I was at this particular statement, head of next presently is null value, right? So this null value has to be changed and the newly created, newly created node base address should be allocated here. So if you look at this particular statement, head of next is equal to curve, right? So the base address of this curve is going to be replaced with the null value previously existing so when this line is executed when this line is executed the connection of the previously the last node or the previously the topmost node is going to get connected to the newly created node right so head is equal to curve now presently this is curve isn't it so the what is head Head should always point to the topmost node. Head should always point to the topmost node. So how do I move this head from this particular node to this node? So that is what this statement is. Head is equal to curve. So when I move the head to curve, I bring the curve here and then I free curve because I no more require curve and I can free the curve. So curve is gone. Curve is gone. That's how I have brought the head to the topmost element. To the topmost element. Is this understood? If there is any doubt regarding any of the statement in the else block, please come to the chat window and ask. Otherwise, I will go to the pop up question. Please take a screenshot. Why did you freak up? Because, see, <coughs> I have already stored. I already stored I head is equal to curve. This pointer is pointing to curve. So I no more require the curve. Therefore, I freed curve. Yeah, uh, if you see the diagram, if you see the diagram, it is not the second element, it is the topmost element. What I am making an assumption, if you see the arrow here, it may be having few more nodes, few more nodes. So head is always pointing to the, to the topmost element in the stack. Yes, Akashdeep, you are right, last element in the list. Any doubt as far as the else block is concerned, please take a screenshot. <coughs> Once we finish the class, we are going to sit down and Execute the code yourself and check. Okay, if the chat window is silent, let me go to the 
pop function. Let me go to the pop function. Now, in the pop function, I am using the shadow pointer. Right? That shadow pointer, as you are seeing it in the diagram, this is the tail and this is the head. I am making a assumption that there are three, three uh, nodes in your stack. Right? The, this is the bottom most, this is the middle and this is the top most. The bottom most always is represented by tail. The top most is always represented by head as we had seen in the diagram. Now I am using a shadow pointer. That is it. One more kind, uh, one more pointer. What is the use of the shadow pointer? It is just behind the, the uh, current. Right? So statement shadow pointer is equal to tail. So shadow pointer, tail and cur is equal to tail. All these three pointers, tail, cur and shadow pointer are pointing to the base address. All, all pointing to the base address, right? Now, head equal to tail, yeah, head not equal to tail. When will head not equal to tail? When the tail is pointing at this node and head is pointing at this node, it means that the address of this and address of this are different. Address of this and address of this are different. Means that, means that there are more than one node there are more than one node in the stack. There are more than one node in the stack. Right? So that is true in this case. As per the diagram, it is true. Head not equal to tail. True. When it is true, I am going to enter the if block. In the if block, we have a loop called as while loop. Cur of next. What is cur? Cur is this. Cur of next not equal to none. Is it true? Yes. Cur of next is storing the base address of the second node. So, cur of next not equal to null is true. So, I, I enter the while loop. In the while loop, please pay absolute 100% attention in this if block. Right? Please try to understand what I am trying to say. Cur of next of next is not a typing mistake. Cur of next of next is not a copy paste typing mistake. Now, what is cur of next of next? Cur of next is this. Of next is this. Students, are you understanding? Cut of next of next not equal to null. See, assume that this is 1000, this is 2000, and this base address is 3000. Right? What is going to be stored here? Anybody? This is the base address is 1000, base address is 2000, and base address is 3000. What is going to be stored here? The first node next 2000, right? What is going to be stored here in the second node next 3000? So, cur of next 2000 of next is 3000, right? So, cur of next of next not equal to null. True or false? True. Not equal to null is true. When it is not equal to null, what I am going to do, I am advancing the shadow pointer here. I am advancing the shadow pointer here. So, shadow pointer will come here. So, shadow pointer is now pointing to the base address of the second node. Right? Now, I am out of the if condition. So, the thir third statement is cur is equal to cur of next. Cur of next. So, cur of next also will come here. Cur of next will also come here. Now, Again, I will go to the while loop. Again, I will go to the top of the while loop condition. Now, cur of next not equal to null. Now, what is this next? This next value is how much? 3000, right? Cur of next is 3000. 3000 is not null. True. This, I am at the while loop. Cur of next is 3000, not null. So again, I take the second entry in the while loop. In the while loop, cur of next is 3000. Of next is what? Null. Right? So is the if condition true or false? The true condition is false. If the true condition is false, shadow pointers will not advance. So shadow pointer will continue to be here. But 
once you are out of the if condition, I am going to bring the curve is equal to curve of next. Right? So curve has come here and the shadow pointer has come here. That's the reason why shadow, shadow is always behind. Behind means what? The shadow pointer is pointing to a node which is just behind the curve pointer. Which is just behind the curve pointer. Right? Now again what happens? Again I go to the top of the by loop, right? Curve of next not equal to null. What is curve of next now? What is curve of next? Null. So is the while condition true or false? It is false. When it is false, I am out of the while loop. I am out of the while loop. When I am out of the while loop, I am saying that pop curve of data. Where is curve? Here. This is 10, this is 20, and this is 30. So this statement will say pop 30, right? This element has been popped from the stack. This element has been popped. Next statement, head is equal to shadow pointer. So presently, this has been popped. So this this point, this particular node, we are planning to delete. But before deleting, I have to bring the head back, right? Do you understand the reason why I am using the shadow pointer? If I do not use the shadow pointer and keep maneuvering the curve, then I will not be able to come back, right? The head should always, once this element is popped, the head should be the second element, right? So head is equal to shadow pointer. So I am bringing the head over here. I am bringing the head over here. Then head of next is equal to null. So head of next is null. So I make it as null. Once I make this as null, I free the curve. Right? So, this is gone. This is gone. So, the head is always pointing to the last element and the tail is always pointing to the first element. Are you clear? Is there any doubt? <coughs> doubt regarding the if condition. If you have any doubt not understood, please put your query in the chat window. Great. So, head not equal to tail means what? Head is equal to tail. If this is no, means what? Head is equal to tail. Means that there is only one node in the stack. Are you getting my point? If head not equal to tail, answer is true. Means what? There are more than one nodes in the stack. If this is false, head equal to tail, means there is only one node in the stack. So I come to the else block. Head of data, I display head of the data. Head equal to null, being the head, shadow pointer is null and tail is null. Because the only one node which was there, that node also got popped out. So the stack is empty. Stack is empty. Yes, else part is clear. Any doubt regarding the else part? Students, how is it possible that none of you have any query this is clear? I am happy, Bhavna. Why 40 students? How is that? Every student has understood every statement. Either you don't want to say that you, you are not understood something or you are not listening only. You are just logged in and pushed off. Fine. So, uh, again, please take the screenshot of that. And the last function is your show function. The last function is your show function. Now I am using the temp, I am using the temp pointer, temp is equal to tail. When I am showing it, I am showing from the tail to head. Right? I am showing the elements from tail to head. So temp is equal to tail. Right? So presently tail and temp both are at the very first or the bottommost uh, node in the stack. Right? Bottommost node in the stack. When tail not equal to null. When will it tail null? When there are no elements in the stack. Right? If tail not equal to null, <coughs> from tail to head, I am just printing it out. 
10 not equal to null. This temp is having some base address. So obviously it is not null. So I am entering the while loop. Print temp of data. So the first data, suppose this is 10. Suppose this is 10. 10 gets displayed. Temp is equal to temp of next. So this temp is going to advance here. Temp is going to advance here. Right? So when temp advances here, temp not equal to null. True, because this temp is having this base address. It is not null. Right? So I am printing 20. Assume that this data is 20 and this data is 30. I am printing 20. Again, I say temp is equal to temp of next. So I bring temp over here. I bring temp here. Now temp is having this base address, say 3000. So 3000 not equal to null. True. So temp of data, I am printing 30. Again, temp is equal to temp of next. Right? What is temp of next? Null. So while temp not equal to null else false and I do not enter the else block and I come out. Suppose tail not equal to null means if this is false means what? Tail is null. So I come to the else block and say stack is empty. Please take the screenshot. Please take the screenshot. Now you are going to write your main function and call it one by one. Right? Now I am exiting. I am exiting and we will be activating the quiz. We will be activating the quiz. I'll get a black screen. So activate the quiz. So students, the quiz is getting activated. Please take the quiz. Uh, the quiz has started students, 15 minutes quiz, please take the quiz.